I always thought that there was a spiritual component to life, and I, I thought that I would need that to a certain extent, but the individuals who couldn't operate without it had some kind of flaw, they had some kind of weakness. I felt that I had ultimate control over my life, and I thought that as long as I gathered all of the control that I could, that nothing could stop me and nothing could hurt me so long as I relied on myself and as long as I had control of everything, that everything was going to be all right. I was coming up on my junior year of high school and I had just decided one night that when I graduate I'm going to join the military. I knew uh, I wanted to join the Army, I wanted to achieve great things in the Army. 9-11 was when I was a sophomore in high school. After 9-11 happened, I just, I felt like this was my call. And so I was deployed to Kabul, Afghanistan in 2004. I was promoted to sergeant right after uh, returning from that deployment. Then took off on my second combat deployment, which was to Baghdad, Iraq in the fall of 2006. We were in a very dangerous area. We were actually in one of the worst neighborhoods in Baghdad. Every day we would go out and we would see death and destruction on every corner that we would face. We grew so close together because all we ever had was each other. We never had anything else, so we would rely on each other to get through those situations. We would be out for 12, 18, 20 hours at a time in 130 degree heat, carrying around you know, 150 pounds of gear, going house to house, door to door, searching homes and, and looking for the people that were orchestrating all the activity in our neighborhoods. I knew that it was my job to protect these guys, that I was responsible for everything that we did or we failed to do. I took that very seriously. I thought that I had to be the toughest guy in the room. I had to be the one that could never break. I had to be the one that had all the answers and I had to be the one that would keep going when everybody else wouldn't. I never considered the ramifications of if I were to die. I figured that if I were to die that that was just what I was called to do, that that was what my destiny was. I figured if I did die, I would die here, I would die doing what I love to do with the people that I love the most. At least I could say that I went out fighting and I could have a lot of pride in that. On May 19, 2007, I had an administrative tasks to take care of, so I went to one of my best friends and I asked him to lead my squad out on patrol that day for me, and then I would take his squad out for him on the, the day after that. Being the amazing friend that he was, he, he agreed and he said, that's no problem. I remember about an hour later hearing a massive explosion. In a matter of minutes, I had found out that the explosion had hit the vehicle that they were riding in. The explosion had picked up this 42-ton vehicle and had thrown it about uh, 50 feet down the street. It ended up that all six individuals inside that vehicle, and, you know, including one of my best friends and the other individuals from my squad, were all killed uh, instantly from the blast of that explosion. I remember after the blast had happened, I was sitting there and I realized that the, the narrative that I told myself for so long about my abilities as a soldier, as a leader, as a, a very self-reliant person, I realized that it was all fake. It, it, it was nothing. It didn't exist. So the identity that I had created for myself and my own abilities and my own uh, control over the situation was, uh, it was gone. And I knew I would never get it back. And I, And at this point, I just kind of felt worthless because I wasn't valuable to anyone because here I am thinking that I had so much ability and so much control over the situation and I couldn't even help the, the people that I loved the most. I decided that I didn't want to leave, but I just felt like I couldn't stay. So in March of 2008, I separated from the military and I decided to return home. I kind of went on a downward spiral in which I just really started destroying my life just because I didn't want to feel the shame and the guilt that I had inside. But I thought that God or whoever it was had gotten it wrong. I, I thought that I was destined to die in, in, in Iraq on May 19, 2007. And I thought that he had taken that away from me and I was very upset about that. And I just felt like I couldn't keep going on anymore. And that's when I met Christy. I met the woman that I would later be blessed to call my wife. It was the first time that I had met somebody that I felt I could confide in and that I could talk to and, and I just remember whispering myself to get up, to dust myself off, to, to get back, to be in the person that I knew that I could be and so I started on this journey of trying to figure out what life was all about and why I was still here and what I needed to do while I was here. We started coming to church. We really enjoyed being here. We thought that the, the message was what we needed to hear, it was the way we needed to live our lives. 
And so I just kind of doubled down on learning about church, learning about religion, learning about Christianity, and about Jesus and the things that he taught. And here I was, you know, ingesting all this information and it wasn't transforming to any heart change, any relationship with him. I just was interested in getting the information from him that I could use to gain more control over my life. I remember sitting in the back row at church Sunday after Sunday and I would listen to Pastor Dave and he would talk about that gap from your head to your heart and I kind of didn't understand it at the time. I, I knew that I had the head knowledge and I knew I had that story in my mind and I thought it was the right story, but I wasn't to a point where I could give up my heart, I could give up control of my life to the Lord and to, to let Him guide my steps. I decided to go to a Christian men's uh, leadership conference. I was in this room with seven or eight thousand people that were all on fire for God and, and they, you could tell that they were just, they were filled with something that I didn't have. And all of a sudden on the second day during this conference, I kind of just felt the, the Holy Spirit just hit me. It was as if Jesus was there and he, and he said to me, he said, Tyler, he, he said, you can't do this without me. He said, no matter how hard you try, you're never going to be able to be this person without me. I, and he said, I know what you're doing. You know, you're doing the same thing you did before. You're, you're trying to be the person that I want you to be without me and it's not going to work. And I just kind of he heard him whisper to me, you know, if you want, if you let me into your heart right now, I will wipe the slate clean and we'll do this together. And he said, this is the only way you're going to be able to do it. And I, for some reason it just felt right and I said, you're right. I'm in this time, I'm, I'm gonna do it, I'm, I'm not gonna look back, and even if I have my doubts, it's gonna be okay, I know you're gonna be there, and we're gonna do this together. The evidence that I was looking for had presented itself. I, I felt like the thing that I always looked at other people and didn't understand, I finally understood. This was the way you were supposed to do it. This, this whole story was true. You know, he was who he says he was. He will do what he says he'll do, and you know, I, I realized that I could be a practical person, I could be a, uh, someone who is not very expressive, and I can still let him fill my heart, I can still give him control of my life, and be the person that he wired me to be. But for the first time, I felt relieved, and I felt like I was a part of the story, and that it, it filled me with a spirit that I'd never had before. You know, it, it helped me see things in a completely new perspective. It, it, it was like I, I changed my pair of glasses and I finally could see, you know, the world as it, what it actually was and I could see what was going on in the world and I, and I saw on a, on a daily basis the, you know, God working in other people's lives and I could see it and it was something that I got excited about. It's something that finally that I could feel. I was given the gift of life and that I was here for a reason and that I needed to honor that opportunity that he gave me and without that fullness that he brought to my life I was just gonna exist I was just gonna take up space in the in the, in the back of the church and I I didn't want to live that life